April 2nd, 2010, the Tesoro Refinery in Anacortes, Washington. A nearly 40-year-old heat exchanger violently ruptures, causing an explosion and fire that kills seven workers, the largest loss of life at a U.S. refinery since 2005. The Chemical Safety Board launched an investigation and determined that the heat exchanger catastrophically failed due to long-term damage from what is known as high-temperature hydrogen attack. The Tesoro Refinery in Anacortes is an 800-acre facility located approximately 70 miles northwest of Seattle. The refinery produces a variety of products, including gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and asphalt. Within the refinery's naphtha hydrotreater unit, raw naphtha, a light component of crude oil, is treated to remove nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen impurities. Before entering the unit's reactor, the raw naphtha and hydrogen are preheated inside pressure vessels called heat exchangers. The unit contains two banks of three heat exchangers supported by a three-level steel structure. Each heat exchanger consists of a bundle of tubes inside a steel shell. Hot fluid exiting the reactor flows through the heat exchanger shell, while cool fluid headed for the reactor flows inside the tubes. Heat is exchanged through the walls of the tubes. Every six months, the heat exchangers are taken offline to be cleaned because of fouling, a common occurrence when operating heat exchangers in this type of service. As the raw naphtha is heated, a scale-like material forms and deposits onto the inside of the tubes, hindering the transfer of heat in the exchangers. On March 28, 2010, one bank of heat exchangers was taken offline and disassembled for cleaning, while the other bank remained in service. This allowed the unit to continue to operate. By mid-afternoon on April 1st, the cleaning was complete, and operators initiated the startup of the offline bank of heat exchangers. The procedure required an inside board operator monitoring the control console and one outside operator opening and closing large manually operated valves. But the heat exchangers had a history of developing leaks during startup, something that refinery personnel had come to see as normal. Additional operators from other nearby units were called upon to assist with the startup, including mitigation of potential leaks. By 10.30 p.m., the outside operator was joined by six workers from other units within the refinery. The seven workers were located around the heat exchangers, where startup activities continued past midnight. But unknown to the workers, the steel shells of the middle vessels in both banks of heat exchangers had been severely weakened due to cracking caused by high-temperature hydrogen attack. This occurs when tiny hydrogen atoms diffuse into steel at a high temperature, then react with carbon in the steel to form methane gas. The larger methane molecules unable to diffuse out of the steel, accumulate, stressing the steel and over time causing fissures. In both of the middle heat exchangers, the fissures grew and connected to form large internal cracks. One such crack was 48 inches long and extended more than one third of the way through the vessel's one inch thick shell. Shortly after midnight, the temperature of the fluid exiting the tubes of the online bank of exchangers increased about 75 degrees over the span of three minutes, a temperature increase that was typical and observed in previous startups. But the middle heat exchanger was so severely weakened from high temperature hydrogen attack that it likely could not withstand the stress caused by the rapid temperature increase. At 12.35 a.m., employees working at a nearby process unit heard a loud hissing noise when vapor began to leak as the heat exchanger cracked at its weakest point. Seconds later, the exchanger violently ruptured. Hot hydrogen and naphtha vapor rapidly vented from the exchanger and spontaneously ignited upon contact with air, resulting in a massive fire that consumed the heat exchanger structure. Three of the seven operators died at the scene. The other four operators were transported to local burn centers with severe injuries. Two died within hours. The other two succumbed within days.